For decades, the Nevada Air Force Area 51 facility has been the eye of a conspiracy hurricane revolving around proof that aliens exist and lurk behind its walls. Books, TV shows, and even massive internet raids have tried to peer past their stark banners, warning against interlopers. In the middle of the arid Nevada desert, there is a dusty, unmarked road that leads to the main gate of Area 51. It is protected by little more than a chain-link fence and intimidating signage. You'd think the much-mythologized top-secret U.S. military base would be more closely watched, but make no mistake, they are watching. Beyond the fence, the cameras see all angles. At the distant crest of the hill, a white van with a tinted windshield looks out at everything below. Locals say the base knows all the desert tortoises and rabbits that jump over the fence. Others claim that there are sensors embedded in the approaching road. What exactly goes on inside Area 51 has given rise to decades of wild speculation. There are, of course, the alien conspiracies that there are galactic visitors hiding somewhere in the interior. One of the most colorful rumors insists that the infamous 1947 Roswell crash was actually a Soviet plane flown by mutated dwarfs, and that the wreckage remains on the grounds of Area 51. Some even believe that the U.S. government filmed the moon landing of 1969 in one of the base's hangars. Despite all the myths and legends, the truth is that Area 51 is very real and still very active. There may not be aliens or a moon landing movie beyond those fences, but something is going on, and only a select few are aware of what's going on beyond that windswept closely guarded Nevada Highway. The start of Area 51 is directly related to the development of the U-2 reconnaissance aircraft. Following World War II, the Soviet Union lowered the Iron Curtain around itself and the rest of the Eastern Bloc, creating a near-intelligence blackout for the rest of the world. As the Soviets supported North Korea's June 1950 invasion of South Korea, it became increasingly clear that the Kremlin would aggressively expand its influence. The United States was concerned about the USSR's technology, intentions, and ability to launch a surprise attack, only a decade after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. In the early 1950s, the US Navy and Air Force sent low-flying planes on reconnaissance missions over the USSR but they were in constant danger of being shot down. In November 1954, President Eisenhower approved the secret development of a high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft called the U-2 program. One of the first goals was to find a remote and secret location for training and testing. They found it in the southern Nevada desert near a salt flat known as Groom Lake which had been a World War II aerial firing range for Army Air Corps pilots. Known by its mapping designation as Area 51, this place in the middle of nowhere became a new top-secret military base. To convince the workers, Kelly Johnson, one of the lead engineers on the U-2 project, gave it a more appealing name, Paradise Ranch. Testing with the U-2 began in July 1955, and reports of sightings of unidentified flying objects began pouring in immediately. Many of these sightings were observed by commercial airline pilots who had never seen an aircraft fly at such high altitudes as the U-2. While today's passenger planes can soar as high as 45,000 feet, in the mid-1950s airlines flew at altitudes between 10,000 and 20,000 feet. Known military aircraft could reach 40,000 feet, and some believed that manned flights could go no higher. The U-2, flying at altitudes above 60,000 feet, would have looked completely alien. 
Naturally, Air Force officials knew that most of these unexplained sightings were U-2 tests, but they were not allowed to release these details to the public. So, natural phenomena, or high-altitude weather research, became the go-to explanations for UFO sightings, even as far back as 1960, when Gary Powers' U-2 was shot down over Russia. What is also interesting about the most recent report from 2013 is that it confirms the existence of Area 51. While the 1998 version has significant redactions when referring to the name and location of the U-2 test site, the version almost unedited from 2013 reveals much more. Including multiple references to Area 51, Groom Lake, and even a map of the area. U-2 operations were discontinued in the late 1950s, but other top-secret military aircraft continued to be tested at Area 51. Over the years, the A-12 and numerous stealth aircraft such as the Bird of Prey, F-117A and Tacit Blue were developed and tested in the Nevada desert. Other declassified documents reveal Area 51's role in Project Have Donut, a 1970s attempt to study covertly obtained Soviet MiGs. In September 2017, an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel died under mysterious circumstances when his plane crashed in Nevada and the Pentagon declined to immediately identify the aircraft. It seems most likely that he was piloting a foreign jet obtained by the United States. Even so, the alien conspiracies gained ground in 1989. When Bob Lazar claimed in an interview on the local Las Vegas news that he had seen aliens and helped reverse engineer alien spacecraft while working at the base. Many have considered it fiction, and even taken offense at the idea including Merlin, who has spent years talking to former Area 51 engineers and employees angry about all the hoopla about E.T. Today, Area 51 is still very much in use. According to Google Earth, new constructions and extensions do not stop happening. Most mornings, eagle-eyed visitors can see strange lights in the sky that move up and down. No, this is not a UFO, but the semi-secret airline, Janet, that transports workers from McCarran Airport in Las Vegas to the base. Few know for sure what is currently going on at America's most secret military base. Merlin has a few guesses, such as improved stealth technology, advanced weapons, electronic warfare systems, and particularly UAVs. Chris Pocock, a well-known U2 historian and author of several books on the subject, told Popular Mechanics that he believes classified aircraft, more exotic forms of radio communication, directed energy weapons, and lasers are currently being developed at the base. Even if the legend surrounding Area 51 is nothing more than fanciful fiction, that won't stop people from gawking beyond those barbed wire fences. At the most basic level, whenever there's something secret or forbidden, it's human nature to find out what it is. Fact or fiction, aliens are a huge tourist draw. In 1996, the state of Nevada renamed Route 375 the Alien Highway, and destinations like the Alien Research Center and the Little Alien Dot Road. Geocaching also attracts visitors here as the road is considered a mega-project, with more than 2,000 geocaches hidden in the area. Then there is the base itself. Although most visitors cannot access the interior, curious civilians can make their way to the front and back doors. The locals will guide you, and the Dreamland Resort website is a great resource filled with maps, driving directions, and first-hand accounts. However, one must be careful when planning an excursion to Area 51. After all, it is the desert. 
We are in the desert, after all, so pack plenty of water, snacks, and appropriate clothing for hot days and cold nights. Phone service and GPS probably won't work, so bring printouts and actual maps. Gas stations are in short supply, so pack fuel and spare tires. Also, remember that the government doesn't want you to peek into Area 51. Do not trespass under any circumstances, or arrests and heavy fines await you.